Hey everybody and welcome back. By now we're well into our Kubernetes journey and in my previous video I showed you how to migrate existing Docker Compose files into Helm and Manifest files so that you can deploy the same app in your Kubernetes cluster. However, there's one important piece of the puzzle if you want to migrate and that's to make sure that your data goes with you. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to move your data from your existing Docker setup into Longhorn within Kubernetes. Now the example I'll use is Longhorn for this because that's what I recommend in a rancher environment, but the same process should be applicable to other storage solutions. So without further ado, let's hop straight into it. We're gonna first have a look at some data and I'll be using an example Nginx application. And then we're gonna copy that over to our cluster make sure that it's mounted within Longhorn, and then deploy Nginx to use that PVC, that persistent volume claim. And hopefully we should be able to replicate the exact same experience using the exact same data. So for this video, if you cast your mind back, we're back to getting Rick rolled. So this is an Nginx deployment that is actually hosted on my Docker environment, the one that I use for these videos. And it's also the one that I use for a couple of Docker containers that I still run because I don't have two pieces of hardware. So things like the Coral TPU, for example. So if we log into Portana, I'll show you this up and running. So logging in now with Zitadel because we set that up in a previous video. Go and check it out if you haven't. And looking into my cluster, and here you can see my Nginx deployment. It's here, Jim's garage, Nginx, and that's it up and running. So let's remind ourselves of where this data is stored. So to do that, I'm gonna hop into the Docker Compose file. So over on my Docker VM, let's open up the Compose file. And here you can see Nginx Jim's garage, which is the same address up here. So this is the same one. And let's have a look. We've got two volumes. We've got templates and we've got HTML. So the bit we want for the website is actually the slash web which resides then and is mounted in the slash HTML. That might be different depending on how you're using Nginx. And obviously we want this to be applicable for all templates, all containers you wanna bring over to Kubernetes. So just make sure you amend this process for whatever bind mounts you're using. So let's just validate that. So it's home Ubuntu Docker Nginx web. And then if we go back to our host, Docker Nginx, and you can see web and template, sorry it's small, um, but here we can see that index HTML and this is super simple. And that index HTML just renders the web page we've got over here, brilliant. So what's the next step? Well, the next step to do this is to go into Rancher and create a volume by using Longhorn. So let's log into Longhorn and then we're gonna create what we need. So here I am back in my Rancher cluster. So this is running RKE, but the same process should work for K3S. So don't worry about that. So on the left, we wanna click on Longhorn. We're gonna open up the GUI. So here we are in Longhorn. So we wanna to go to volume and you'll see a couple of volumes that have already been created from my last video. Now, and here's a good example of a PVC that was created without specifying a name. So this is why we do it manually, albeit you can just do it like that if you want. So we're gonna create a volume. Now, the name of this, I'm just gonna call it Nginx. So I'm gonna call that Nginx. For this video, I'm just gonna give it one gig. We don't need any more than that. But obviously, you wanna make sure that you create this dependent on the size of the data that you want to move over. And also, you wanna make sure you leave some breathing room, i.e. if you're gonna add more data at a later time. So once that's done, we're just gonna hit OK in the bottom. And then that's created this volume now. So now we've got this volume created, you'll see that if we hover on the right hand side, you can see an attach. Now this is important because we've got a blank volume that hasn't been formatted or anything like that. And we're gonna attach it to one of our nodes in the cluster. Now it could be any, so if I click on that, you can click on the drop down for the host and you can see all of these. Now it hasn't got the master nodes because we haven't installed Longhorn on the master nodes. So in this instance, I'm just gonna use my two worker nodes because typically they will have more resources, i.e. more CPU, more RAM. So things like big copies, etc., are probably gonna be more reliable. So I'm gonna use RKE204 or K3SO4. That's my first worker node. 
So clicking that, and then I click OK. So now you'll see that it's attaching it. And now if I connect to this virtual machine, so back into PuTTY or whatever command line terminal you're using. So here I'm logging into 3.24, which we can validate in Rancher. So if I go to Rancher, you'll see that my 04 node here is 3.24. So that's the one that we're connecting to. So if I hit connect, we can now log in. First time I've logged in, we get that warning. And then if I hit putty, you can see that I'm now connected to this virtual machine. So there's a few things we want to do. Now we've mounted a new volume to this machine, which is a bit similar to just what you would do with Proxmox, for example, i.e. adding a new drive. So let's run the following command, which will list all disks. So sudo fdisk-l for list. And hopefully we will see what we just created. Yeah, and we do. It's this one here, slash dev, slash sdc, and it's one gig. How do we know that? Well, I know it's not the ones above, because these are all within the loop, so part of the Ubuntu. And I know that it's sequentially numbered, or lettered in this case. So sdc is the one that we want. Now we've got that, there's a couple of things we want to do. So the first thing I want to do is to create a temporary folder which is where I'm going to mount this drive here to. So to do that, we're just going to do a sudo make dir. I'm just going to put it in temp slash folder. You can call this whatever you want. So now that's created. And if we go back to here, we can just validate that by going to temp. And you'll see that there's a folder here. I probably don't have permissions to access this. OK, I do. So now we've created that, we want to actually format this drive. So we want to do that using the make FS, the make file system. We're going to use ext4, which is the format that Longhorn expects. So that's sudo make file system dash t ext4 and slash dev slash sd. And then you want to take this letter here. So in my example, I've just left it as x, but you want to change that. And it's probably going to be c if it's the first time you've done this, but please do check. If you get this wrong, you could format a drive with data on then you're in a whole host of trouble. So SDC, and then when I hit return, it's gone away and done that, and now it's now formatted that drive. So the next thing we want to do is we've now added a drive, but within Linux, you need to mount that drive. So we're gonna do a sudo mount command by doing sudo mount, and then again, we want to change this, so SDX to SDC, or whatever yours is, to temp folder. So when we hit return, it's now mounted that new drive to this folder here. So now anything we add into this folder is gonna get recorded to that new drive we've created. And for those thinking ahead, you're right. We just simply need a way now of copying data from our existing Docker host into this folder. We're then gonna go back into Longhorn, unmount it, and then when we spin up our new containers through the manifest or Helm, we simply need to tell it to use this volume for its data. So let's get on to copying. There's a few ways you could do that. Now that I'm logged in here, I could simply copy and paste this index over to that folder. Although you probably want to do it programmatically with something like rsync, because rsync is gonna preserve all of the file details. So that's things like creation dates, owners, all of that good stuff. If you copy and paste, you'll often run into issues where it will change data, metadata, etc. It could change permissions and it could change the owner. And then when you come to use that data again, you're gonna have a whole load of problems with permissions denied, files not accessible, and it will just break the application. So for this, I'm gonna use rsync. Now the command I'm gonna use looks like this. It's sudo, so sudo permissions to copy. rsync, rsync is a program to do copying files. And then there's a whole host of parameters. Now you can read up on what all the parameters mean, but effectively it runs archive, and then v for verbose, so lots of printouts, and h, a, and x are the key ones here. So these are gonna preserve all of the ACLs, the access control lists, permissions, and history, and even things like the sim links, etc. 
So with those parameters passed, it's going to connect with username Ubuntu to my Docker host via IP address. It's probably going to ask me to import a password because on my Docker host, I haven't been using SSH certificates. If you do have SSH certificates, you will have to specify that, I think with the dash I and then the certificate name, but the command should look the same otherwise. Now the rest of the command, we're going to connect to home, Ubuntu, Docker, Nginx and web. And if we go back to the Docker Compose file, we can see that home, Ubuntu, Docker, Nginx, web, that's exactly where that folder is. So then we're gonna copy everything with the asterisk to the temporary folder we've just created on this machine. So fingers crossed, here goes. Now the first time I ran that command, it timed out because this is on a separate VLAN that doesn't have access to my existing Docker host, which is on a separate VLAN. So I hopped into my firewall and created a rule so that this will work. So let's run that command again. Now it's gonna say, do you trust this machine? Cause it's the first time it's seen that fingerprint. So we're gonna say yes. Then it's gonna ask for the password. This is the Docker host password. So I'll input that now, hit in return. It's then copied that file across index.html. So let's verify that. So now here, on my Docker host, 200.50, you can see the index, and then hopefully on 04, if we refresh this, yes, we now see the index.html. Brilliant. So we've copied that data across, and hopefully it's even done things like preserving the user. So if we scroll across, we'll see that the permissions are the same and the owner's the same root, which if again, we go back to here and validate, we can see that it's owned by root and those permissions are the same, bingo. So now we're on the final step. So what we need to do now is to unmount this device. So we do a sudo umount slash dev slash sdc. Now it might create an error message if you are in the folder you're trying to unmount. So if you've gone to slash temp slash folder in the command line, you can't unmount it because you're in there, but this should work. And now we've unmounted that drive. So once we've unmounted it from 04 or whichever worker node you're using, hop back into Longhorn and then on the Nginx, which is here and it's still mounted, you can see it's attached to 04, we don't want that. We want to do detach. So we're gonna detach that now. We don't wanna do a force, we wanna do it gracefully. That's detaching and now it's detached. So. The next bit I'm gonna skip over and go straight into the deployment because I've already covered how to convert this in my last video, but I'll show you the manifest file anyway. So now I've remoted onto my RKE2 admin and I've created the default headers, the default deployment and ingress that we're gonna use. And this follows the same process as in my last video. So with this template created, we've got a service at the top and then we get onto the deployment. And the important bit, again, if you're not sure about this stuff, look at my last video, we've got the mount path. So this is the same as what was specified within the Docker Compose, i.e. whatever data we give it is gonna be mounted to user, share, nginx, html. And if you remember, we put the index in a file and we're gonna mount that now to here. So this is gonna require us to create the namespace of nginx first, and then we're gonna to need to create a PVC that's assigned to the volume we just created. So let's go ahead and do that. So within our admin machine, we're gonna do a kubectl, create namespace nginx. That's now created. So now we can go into Longhorn and you see this detached nginx, we now need to assign this. So scrolling down, we want to go to create pv pvc. It's got a name of nginx and I'm gonna put it in the namespace of nginx. So now, when the deployment for Nginx says, hey, give me some space, it should say there's already an existing volume here. I'm gonna mount this one and run it. And you can see that the actual size now is 48.9. So albeit it's just got that index in there, there's some other stuff that gets put in just from formatting a drive. So tables, etc. So now if we look to deploy this image, we should then be able to access Nginx.jim's garage. So what I'm gonna do first, just so you know I'm not cheating, go into Portainer, I'm gonna shut this one down. Now that that's shut down, we can check, 
this website shouldn't be available. Nope, it's a 404. So let's head back into the terminal and let's spin up this new container deployment. So to do that, kubectl apply-f manifest and then we specify the nginx folder because we want all of it to be created. So hitting return, that's created everything we need. So the headers, the nginx deployment and the service. So going back into Rancher, we should be able to see the cluster now and we should be able to see that it's been attached. That's great, success, pulling the image and then in a moment, everything should be up and running. So the bit I now need to change obviously is within my pie hole. I need to make sure that I don't reference the existing Docker image. I want to now reference the new traffic that I'm running on my RKE. So if to do that, we just go into the services and we can find out exactly what it is. So just hovering here in the bottom left hand corner, it's super tiny, but you can see that it's 3.65. So that's what I need to reference now. Instead of my existing Docker traffic instance, I need to change the IP. So in PyHole, I'm going to delete this record. I'm then going to re-add it and I'm gonna change it to the IP address of my RKE traffic instance, 192.168.3.65, and then we're gonna hit add. So now that's added, and hopefully if I refresh now this Nginx page, everything should be up and running. Here goes. Now, as ever, caching is always your friend, so let's open up an incognito tab, and then we'll paste it in here. Whee! We're getting Rick rolled, but on Kubernetes, which is awesomely more cooler. So let's head back now and just validate. No trickery here. We've got Portainer. Jim's Garage Nginx is turned off. We can check as well in Longhorn that this is now assigned and it's healthy. That looks all good to us. So let's go back to Rancher now. And if we go to our local cluster, we can see our workloads. And then if we scroll down, we can see Nginx is up and running. Everything looks fine. And there's no recent events or errors in the locks. So bingo. You've now successfully copied data from your existing Docker setup. You've created manifest templates. And now you have the same exact experience with all the benefits that Kubernetes offers. So. Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully that's one of the final pieces of the puzzle to help you get from Docker over into Kubernetes. So hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.